Polylines are probably the most common used tool for interpreting digital outcrop models. So I'll go through um, the basics of polyline interpretation and show you some of the additional features that you can use with them. We'll go to interpretations here and we start with digitize polyline. And the basic mode is click your points along a bedding plane. Now in this mode, you can't drag. The polyline vertex is set when you release the mouse button. So we double click to finish. Now we see our line and our vertices. The next stage is we can go to draw as opposed to digitize. So we've got the different options as we use this drop down menu. In this mode, we can drag the mouse so we can put together lots of different points or we can click but this allows you to click and then drag again unlike the digitized points mode again double click to finish and this time you see you have a lot more vertices in your polyline if you want to swap between the two modes we can start off in either mode in this case the digitized points and pressing the space bar allows you to switch to the other mode Again, we can see here that we've gone into draw mode in the middle of this polyline. We can do some refinement on these polylines, so they will appear in your interpretations tab. On the first one here, we will go to, um, oh, we can switch it off, we'll switch that one off. On polyline one, which is this one, We'll do operations, adaptive refine, and this cutoff angle defines how this is going to get refined. So if the angle between the vertices on either side of a particular vertex are greater than this value, so straighter than 170, the center vertex will be removed. So we can click that and we see that we've adaptively refined this polyline and there's more vertices where the surface is more complicated and fewer when the, um, the surface is straighter. We also have a different mode where we can say in here, refine by spacing, and I say I only want to, polylines to be um, no closer than one meter and then there we go so that's refined that polyline so that's a little bit on digitizing polylines and how you can refine them if you want to edit your polyline we use our move vertices tool and this allows us to drag a polyline vertex around on the outcrop and when we do this approach the vertex is always attached to the surface of the outcrop model. So that's a great way of cor correcting vertex positions. There is also another edit mode, which is the 3D translate mode, which gives you a bit more flexibility. So I've just selected 3D translate. I'm holding down the control key and using the mouse wheel, and that's changing the size of the widget. If I now click on the widget, and the different planes allows me to move in different orientations or along different axes. We go back to move vertices and we can stick that back on the outcrop. Click the move mode button to cancel any existing editing modes. The display styles uh, we can use for polylines are controlled in the polyline group. Here we can set the trace size. We can say whether we want a 3D trace or not, which is the cylinder. We can change the uh, size of the cylinder and the trace. So there's the uh, cylinder size there. Let's put that back down to one. We can do uh, show planes. So the planes will be projected out along the orientation of the the um, dip, so along the dip direction. And that's calculated from 
a best fit plane to all the vertices in your polyline. So if we've got a, a good uh, 3D shape like we have here, the orientation will be calculated correctly. Um, but if your polyline is a straight line, then it becomes difficult to calculate the orientation because a straight line doesn't define a plane. To change the color of your polyline, we assign them to different picks. And that is done partly in the collections tab. So you see here we've got picks set up as a group. Now at the moment there's no picks set up, so let's add some in. And we can do that using this active descriptor and it comes under the horizon. This pencil button will let us create a new pick. So we've got pick one. And we'll just create another one. I'll just call it pick 22 to show you can edit the names. And then you can, whatever is in uh, set in the active descriptor here, new polylines will be attached to that pick name. So if we go digitize polyline now, select some vertices, double click to finish. See this polyline has a different color and that is defined by the color of the pick which is found in the collections tab here. So we have unknown, pick one, pick 22. There's always a pick called unknown um, which is the default. If you go to your interpretations uh, again and we go to a single one of the polylines that we've drawn, you'll see within the polyline properties it does have a color value. Now if I change this color value, nothing happens on the display here. That's because within the polyline group we can change the way in which the colors are displayed. By default it's the pick that the polyline is assigned to or the stratigraphy we can change it to user and then every polyline as you create it will have a randomly generated color assigned to it which you can then go in and modify through the properties of the polyline. If we want to do some further editing we select our polyline and go to the digitize polyline button. It's a split button, so as before we can open it up and now we've got split line. That will only be active or available if the polyline is selected. So let's select that and we click on a vertex within the polyline and then we see that that's split in two. And in the interpretations tree we'll see that the polyline we've just split is now split into two separate sections. This, this one section is uh, renamed to be the name of the polyline with underscore split added to it. Some other editing that we can do if the polyline is selected we can digitize polyline and go add node and then if I click anywhere near that polyline it will attach a new vertex and insert a new vertex into the closest segment of that polyline that we've just um, selected. We can then of course go back to move vertices and take these and edit them into the correct position. Move mode cancels the, um, the editing mode. If we then uh, let's switch our display style back to the pick, I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this and put another polyline in just along here. So let's add one that comes around this corner. I forgot to mention earlier on that if you hold down the shift key while digitizing, it pauses the digitizing digitizing mode and allows you to then move the model around. So that's great for when you're going around corners. Right. New polyline has been added. It is assigned to pick 22. If I want to change it, I can go back to say pick one, select it, and then 
if I use this button, update all selected, uh, selected objects with this value, it will assign pick one to whatever selected. So I could do that for all of these. So I've selected two polylines there, assigned to pick one, and they've all gone into the same group. If I want to join these two, simply select one, then the other. Holding down the control key allows you to select more than one polyline. Then we do join lines and the two polylines will be merged together into one. If I want to organize the polylines in the tree into different groups, that's quite easily done. Select them and then do group. And we then end up with a group of polylines in the data tree, sorry, in the, t in the interpretation tree. I can carry on adding polylines into this group by giving that group focus. So right click, set focus. And when I've done this, every time I digitize a new polyline, double click to finish, it will then go into the group that has focus. When you're finished and you want to change the focus to a different group, we can set the focus back to the main group and it will put them in the root of the tree in, uh, in that polylines group. Let's look at a few different display styles. So I'll go to this polyline here. You see the line is projected in and out of the outcrop along the direction of dip down the direction of dip. If I select that, I can then do things like change the line style on it. At the moment we're shown as solid, I can have dashed or dotted or a dash dot style. So you see it has a wider band and a narrow band together. So let's go back to dashed. Um, and then we can change the line repeat from one so it will repeat the pattern every meter. I can do this to 0.5 and it'll make the pattern repeat quicker. That's quite useful if you want to show different uh, levels of confidence on your interpretations, much as you would use different line styles when you're doing geological mapping in the field. So we'll switch it back to solid. All of the polylines give you some basic uh, statistics on the length and the, the um, geometry of the line that you're working with. You can, as well, in the polylines group, do things like switch the planes on and off, show the 3D traces, and we can have a thing called variable extrusion which tries to adaptively change the projection distance around the polyline to give a better display. Um, there's also plane opacity, which we can reduce here to 0.5, and now we're showing the plane uh, slightly, slightly transparent. Projection distance is how far in and out of the outcrop that this uh, line is projected. And then we have an option here called minimum digitizer spacing. This relates to when you're digitized the polyline using draw mode. Uh, it's set here at a minimum digitizer spacing of 0.2, so that's um, 20 centimeters. So when you're using the draw mode, it will only put a point every 20 centimeters. I can demonstrate that here. So let's go back to digitize uh, draw. Press spacebar to go back into the draw mode. Double click to finish. If I now change polylines here, I change the minimum digitizer spacing to 0.5 and do the same process. So we go back to draw here. And I'll just draw across the top here. Double click to finish. You then see that we now have um, the points are, are not as close together. And that's what the minimum digitizer spacing controls. As you're adding new polylines, you can change the default name. So at the moment, the default name here is polyline. So we could do 
change it to be surface instead. And if I start to add new polylines now, you'll see in the interpretations tree that it begins with uh, surface rather than polyline. So it's picked up that default name. And you can change the start of the name counter. So we could go back to surface zero as well if we wanted to just do that again. Add a few vertices in. Of course, you do this much slower, much with much more care if you're doing it for, for real. And then we have, uh, you see, surface zero. Now, on an outcrop like this, where we have the interaction of uh, um, bedding and fractures and faults, we might want to do an interpretation where we have vertices that are common uh, and show the tie points, the, the crossover points between a bed and a fracture or between different fractures. We can do that by, first of all, we'll just edit these and bring these vertices to fit onto this uh, fracture plane here. Of course, we could extend that by adding another polyline on the end. And we select the mode snap vertices. And I'll digitize uh, a set of points now. And we could go down here along this fracture and select there, clicking on where we have intersections with bedding planes all the way down to there, double click to finish. And now I've done that because I had the snap vertices option selected. It's joined of these vertices that are colored in this color here are common vertices between these two polylines. They are shared. So now if you move this vertex, it changes both of these polylines. It's a good way of uh, keeping a track of connectivity between features that you're digitizing. OK, so that's an overview of some of the polyline uh, editing tools that there are in VRGS. There are a lot more that you can use. Look at the documentation site and uh, feel free to experiment with the software.